What's going on, everybody? Ya es muy tarde, son las once y no llega. ¿Cuánto tiempo estaremos esperando a casar? Todos los días, cuando I'm live and alive. yo pregunto, ¿dónde está el hombre turco? Y me pongo a llorar. And I hope all the boys, girls, and envies are having a fantastic one. Y de repente, mis pantallas se refrescan. La canción está sonando. Ya vamos a comenzar. Ya veremos si con este gran corrido. I hope all the boys, girls, and envies. Un saludo a Hassan. Are having a fantastic one. All I got to say is, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do a Grito anymore. You guys have completely stopped me from doing it, okay? I've been bullied way too much. So to all my flexicans out there, I'm sorry. I know you want, I want, I know you want me to do a Grito every morning, okay? But I'm not going to do it. But I hope all the boys, girls, and MBs are having a fantastic one regardless of me not doing a fucking hitting a Grito, Okay. Because it's a beautiful day today. It's a wonderful day today. Oh, my God. I feel so fucking good today. I did some conditioning earlier. My Lord. This is part of the broadcast where I tell you a little bit about... My, ah, this is part of the broadcast where I tell you a little bit about my personal news. What's going on in my life. It's Wednesday, October 5th. 11, 10 a.m. And it's going to be a fantastic fucking day. Another, another beautiful, brilliant, 73 degrees, sunny day here. Sunny Los Angeles, California. We're two days out from TwitchCon. Or I guess one day out from TwitchCon, technically. Say, Viva Mexico, cabrones! I mean, of course. Chinga la migra! Turn this off. It's called Milk Con now? Yeah, dude, I'm, I'm, about, to, I'm about to milk! Um, I'm about to go hard on that milk. Anyway, I hope all the boys, girls, and MBs are having a fantastic one, though. Wonderful one. This is part of the broadcast where I tell you a little bit about my fucking personal news. Happy Yom Kippur. To all the Jewish Hassanabi heads. Starting every day with a hate crime. Yep. Ludwig is stealing your content? Shut the fuck up. Are you serious? The brown? No longer need his sonic get the same commentary from Ludwig with less ads. Listen. Let me tell you something. Stay in your fucking lane, Lud. Eminem has, quote, transitioned from high to lower block heels. Also less sexy. That's progress. Eminem's will not be satisfied until every last cartoon character is deeply unappealing and totally androgynous. Until the moment you wouldn't want to have a drink with any one of them. <laughs> Before the change, I think we can all admit that the brown M&M in conjunction with the green M&M could definitely get it. Not only my number, but my cock and balls. But nowadays, these M&Ms are grotesque. If I found them at a bar, I might think that they were a Twitch viewer. Definitely not deserving of my dick. That's the goal. When you're totally turned off, we've achieved equity. My Tucker's better. Straight up. I'll say it. I'll say it. You don't have to. My Tucker's better. He's, he's, he's uh, very white, though. He does have a, he does have a buff. Being, being as white, like being the, the, the exact poster boy of the type of future that Tucker Carlson wants in the United States of America gives him like this this additional bonus when he's going for when he's going for that Tucker Carlson. When Ludwig does it, it's not a bit. <laughs> yeah, he's got the Anglo buff, mate. Um anyway, anyway, anyway. Um this is part of the broadcast where I tell you a little bit about my personal news and I'm gonna keep it real. I'm gonna keep it a stack. I'm gonna keep it a buck fifty. My personal news is not good. That's right. I am an addict. Last night I ended the broadcast abruptly because my what all the time 
Bill Burr potentially talking about you on the pod this week? Wait, what? Why? Uh, also, there's a clip that's going around where a fat Italian man from a bank is saying that they'll be able to control how people spend their money. Would you adopt this new dollar or wrap the phone cord around your neck and make the jump? Dude, you got me so fucking stoked, dude. You got me so fucking hyped. I hate you. Dude, that is the worst debate, brother. That is the worst fucking debate. Why would you do that? That's sickening. You hurt me. Like you, you actually hurt me. I was about to come out. I was about to come clean. I was about to open up. I was about to let you know. Okay. Ludwig also covered the uh, cheating scandal on his mogul mail. He's doing this on purpose. Uh, Ludwig might be doing this on purpose, but... This is honestly a, the fault of my, my fucking uh, editors. Like, that entire segment is fire. He literally just made the entire segment and turned it into his own mogul mail. But I guess he's mostly, ta mostly just talking about Nadia here, which, of course, he was going to. But, like, my editors fucked up. My editors should have absolutely made the cheating segment and turned it into, uh, like, a like a full-blown video. I don't know why they didn't do that. That's their fault, you know? Hey, you, you fucking miss all the shots you don't take. Why didn't you upload it to Comic Coms? I don't like the name Comic Coms. We might change it. That's Austin Ox's uh, memetics. And it's also not a one-take one uh, Jake show at all. Motherfucker, it's your editors. I don't think you guys understand, Okay. I probably should pay them one day. What makes you think that I have any control over my own fucking people? At what stage in this fucking experience have you thought for any moment that like Hassan has full control over his own editors in any meaningful capacity? I mean, one of my editors is famous for canceling me. Okay. No. Everybody is their own fucking king, okay? I am, in many respects, the best fucking person to work for because I just let you do whatever the fuck you want. And why say your people? I mean, they edit my videos but the the you know the thing is like i just you know they 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 run on their own speed their own pace whatever they feel comfortable doing they do you know what i mean uh oh anyway i was gonna do uh i was gonna come clean i was gonna come clean folks this is gonna take this is gonna take a lot Okay. I need to I need to come clean. Last night my computer DC'd and my stream ended. But I immediately turned it back on. And obviously I did not go back to streaming because it was over at that point. It effed and it was at the end of the stream anyway. But I'll just say it. I'll just come out and say it. I'm an addict. My name is Hassan Piker, and I'm an addict. I'm a Valorant addict. A child game addict. That's right. Valorante child game with colors. I'm afraid of the CSGO realism. I'm afraid of CSGO, the sounds, the realism. It's scary too scary for me that's why I play the child game played offline last night for like four more hours and I got my fucking shit pushed in and just like an addict does I tried to bring in others into my world of addiction I brought in I brought in a young mind a young soul 
Tubbo, who's only 18. I brought into my world of addiction the streamer known as Valkyrie. And lastly, I tried to get Ludwig in too. I tried to suck him in as well. But of course, he was too fucking busy streaming some random video game and was like, all right, boys, the plan is simple. Sorry. I'm going to end the stream soon and play. And he didn't. He didn't actually play with us. But it doesn't matter because you know what? It doesn't matter because I lost so many fucking games, dude. I lost so many fucking games last night. And it's like my soul was being sucked out of me, okay? And I thought to myself, like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, I, I'm not good. I mean, but when I'm good, I'm so fucking good. You know what I mean? When I'm good, when I pop off and I top frag, it's like, it's better than sex. Okay? I'll just say it. It feels so much better than anything else. It feels like, like, I will hit a fucking PR in the gym and I'm like, that's not enough. That's not enough. I, I can do better. I can do bigger. I can go bigger. Like, I have hit my maximum weight before and I haven't hit my peak yet. Okay. Cause I'm recomping still and it doesn't fucking like, it doesn't feel as good. You know what I mean? Pumping iron doesn't feel as good. I mean, the hormones afterwards is great. You know what I mean? I, I feel fantastic after I work out this morning. I worked out with golden. It was fucking awesome. Um, but a ranked game when you fucking pop off. Okay. In a ranked game where you pop off, it's just better than anything else. Anyway. The issue is when I, the issue is when I'm not popping off though, because I'm an incredibly inconsistent uh, gamer. So when I'm not popping off, it's really fucking bad. Because I'm losing super hard. Bro, you need to stop playing with Smurfs. It's going to ruin your experience. Actually, gaining ELO, it'll be more even. Yeah, the problem is... The, the problem with that is that... I uh, When we play with Smurfs, I think like the game has like another... I'm now convinced that when you have Smurfs on your team, they literally will put another Smurf on the opposing team. Because... I have never, I have never actually fucking played in a game without a Smurf on the other team. Like every time they're dropping 20 bombs by like, it's so fucking weird. Yeah, it's called the Smurf Q. It's a thing. Dude, dude, it is so, it is so crazy. Yeah, dude, it's best to play your true rank. The problem is I don't have a five stack. Every game I play, if I play with like, if I play with Ray, every game I play, there's a dude dropping 40s, okay? And it's fucking insane. They're, the rest of their team is literally, it'll be like, guy getting fucking 37 kills, and then the rest of the team is like, the, the rest of the team is like two kill, three kill, four kill. And it's like, what the fuck? Iron to Silver has Smurfs like crazy. Yeah. Getting out of bronze is not hard. Yeah, getting out of bronze is not hard if I fucking play either with other bronze people and only play against other bronze people that, and no Smurfs, or, or uh, if, I, um, if, if I just, like, play with hard carries. You know what I mean? There's a hidden elo in all MM games. You just have a rating that you can't see that's heavier than the one you see. You should just play with whoever. You need a duo, not a five party. Yeah, the problem is when you duo. When you uh, when you duo, right? Uh, the other three stack could be fucking Garbo, and like we did that. Me, Tubbo, and Ray kept playing after the stream was over, right? And the issue is, the other two players on our team were fucking actually really good. They were actually really good. Okay, but the problem is 
they were insane for some fucking weird reason. I think they got like frustrated that we weren't like carrying them super hard, even though our kills were like pretty similar, right? And they started, no, listen, they started fucking flaming us and like throwing the game. They were like, come on, let's just, let's just fucking uh, forfeit. I'm like, what is happening? It's literally like 7-7. Seven, seven. Why are you trying to FF? And they started cursing at Tubbo, and I lost my shit. I was like, you fucking virgin. You shut the fuck up. Listen here. You're fucking grounded, okay? I fucked your mom, and you're grounded. And he's just like, bro, shut up. Like, I bet you're broke, dude. I bet you're broke. You broke 21-year-old. That's what he was calling me. And I was like, ha, ha, that's so nice. <laughs> Some people just don't have fun unless they're cr uh, crushing. It's just weird. It, it, is, it is very... It is very strange to just like have your team actually dominate and then your teammates go, oh, dude, you suck. Like, oh, we, we suck actually. It's like, no, we don't. We actually literally don't suck. I don't know why you're doing this. I don't know why you're fucking losing your mind and like unironically throwing when we're playing well. And it just like doesn't matter. It just doesn't make any sense. And it's such a weird experience. You have to solo until you become better. It's the only way to grow. Yeah, no, I don't have time for that, man. I've never seen that before. I've never played like competitive online games like this. The only thing I used to do was land parties for Dota. So I've never actually been like obsessively trying to play a fucking video game online with like random strangers and shit. And the wildest part about that is that like people still, people will flame you when you're winning. It's so weird. Anyway. Can we get a fit check, King? You have been dressing ever since you wore the rude tee. Uh, I'm wearing my Saikuno merch. And underneath, I'm wearing my own apparel, my secret apparel that hasn't come out yet. And this is not even, this is the first, this was the first try. And uh, it has like some stuff on it, but I'm wearing my real tree pants. <sighs> anyway, hey, I sampled you talking. I'm a rapper from Germany. I started making beats for Joji back when he was pink guy. What? Everything is fucking fundamentally broken. So you're just sitting back and enjoying the ride, okay? Even if you are directly in the pathway of the storm, you're sitting there and enjoying the ride as best as you can. Now, some people probably took me seriously when I was joking, and to those people I say, R.I.P., you know, my bad, but it is what it is. Big the status quo, yo, ich bin man von Welt wie Marco Polo. Du schaust Frage Omo, machen Brett. Das Monopoly, uh, sie tragen Foko Healer, alles trotzdem Spießer, waren in der Trattoria, jetzt zieht sie nackt vor meinem Plattenspieler, parallel dazu spielst du mit deinen Arzen FIFA, du hast okay. Okay, I have no idea what this dude is saying, you know what I mean? He said Monopoly though. This shit kind of gas. This sucks, Lamau. I can't tell. I don't know what the fuck he's saying. Anyway, um, please keep watching the Bill Burr clip until the 50 minutes. Wait, really? Are you fucking with me, dude? Why did you send me the fat Italian man then? Until the 50th minute? Just send me the uh, act. And they work for those 1,200 or whatever there is. They work for those people. They work for the people that literally uh, dump shit into the water supply. If you and I dump shit into a water supply, we are fucking terrorists and we are going to jail for the rest of our lives. They do it. They pay a fine. They don't clean up. The government makes us pay for it because those are the people, those fucking assholes are the ones that sign their goddamn checks. And every once in a while, you have a politician who will actually try and stand up against those cunts. And that person is immediately labeled a communist or a socialist. And for whatever reason, liberals and conservatives, you know, people that are loyal to those parties. I'm losing my fucking mind, dude. He is spitting so much. And I'm just saying, listen, this is my new fetish. Please, directly in my mouth, sir. Okay? 
Please. What the fuck? Just believe it. I mean, you look at Bernie Sanders and the shit that that guy wanted to do. Like, the Democrats literally boxed that guy out and gave the nomination to Hillary Clinton. They've done it to him twice. And the, the liberals on the left spoke and said, this is the person we want. And they fucking ignored it because all of them are on the fucking take, just like all the ones on the right are on the take, probably except for a few a handful of them. So that's basically... For the record, this might be new to some of you, but Bill Burr has always been like this. I've literally told you that Bill Burr has been like this. I've just never seen him spoke... Uh, I, I've never... I've never actually seen him like speak this openly about it though, ideologically speaking. And um he's but he's always been like this. He's always talked about how like fucked up uh capitalism is without like mentioning capitalism as much or socialism or communism. He just he's Bill Burr is always always says shit like this. What it is. You know? It is what it is. What the fuck are you going to do? Um, you know, whoever organizes the thing someday who's way smarter and knows how to do it, I will join that to try and fight it. But until they do, I'm not going on a Reddit page and just sit there talking about gloom and doom with a bunch of other people with no fucking solutions because you slowly go insane. So... Uh, you know, I think the only way to combat this type of stuff is you really have to work on yourself to become a better person, a more empathetic person. And, you know, as I'm sitting there telling some, somebody a squat twat on this fucking thing. But like, um, you know, all of this shit that they stir up your feelings about other countries or, or, or the racist that Trump stirs up. You know what I mean? These fucking like just straight up people that walk around saying the fucking N word and shit. Um, and like you really have, these are verbatim bars, dude. Okay. These are verbatim designated. I mean, I don't own these words, obviously. Okay. I don't own these words, but these are exactly the same thoughts that I've had and have talked about so many fucking times. It's so good. You have to try and not listen to those people and get caught under their fucking bullshit because they're, they're, they're. They don't, they don't have your best interest. And, you know, Hillary Clinton, I don't think there was, there's no difference. She's just as evil as Trump. She's just smarter. <laughs> she just knows how to say what she's saying. Um, you know, but you know what she's doing, okay? Look, you know, I don't want to get into this shit, but like, you know, that shit that people are saying online going, hey, so you got the Epstein guy and you got the person that booked the island, but what about that list of people of all the people that went there? And they're protecting those people. And they got rid of the people that were going to expose them. I mean, I mean, it's it's really not conspiracy theory. It's kind of right there if you want to see it. Um, yeah, it's and, you know, liberals love... A guy that I got to be careful so I don't get in trouble, but like liberals love a guy that like went there allegedly like 20 fucking times. They still love the guy. They they love a guy that drone bombed weddings. So like I don't see them as liberal, progressive fucking people. And then on the right, you know, what they're showing me is fucking. OK, a little bit of a little bit of stream uh, a drop for a second. Um, I mean, he's blasting Obama too. People, uh, especially men, tend to have their final ideological consolidation during the Middle Age crisis, and some take it with more dignity than others. And as a contrast between two people in the same profession going through the phase, you got Chappelle and you got Burr. I mean, I think, I think Bill Burr is on his George Carlin arc, whereas Dave Chappelle went in the exact opposite direction. And like heavily leaned into the the mania that comes along with uh, with being deified. You know what I mean? I I think like what you're what you're talking about. I wouldn't say is like a middle age arc or anything like that. But 
there comes a point in people's lives when you are so famous and so rich and have so much complete total financial security that you either you either go you either go the route of like how dare anybody criticize me i'm sick and tired of this shit i hate it i'm going to i'm going to do anything and everything i can to like destroy my enemies okay and plenty of it, the easier route, the logical route is the one where you have capital and therefore align with other capital owners and do everything in your power to continue just uh, eroding the part of you that once uh, recognized that you yourself were a worker and once wanted a better future for others. You know what I mean? Because comedians oftentimes want that. Whether it's their own social group, I didn't blast off. I'm gonna blast off right now. Actually, let me just put, let me just blast off real quick, and then we'll get into it uh, a little bit more. Dave Chappelle's the most overrated stand-up comedian of all time. He's not even in the top ten. That's that's false. That's crazy. You're out of your mind. Dave Chappelle literally is is uh, one of the greatest comedians of our generation up until his last stuff. That's crazy to say. I'm sorry. Is Bill Burr your favorite comedian? I mean, Bill Burr's always been in my top, but he's certainly... Dave Chappelle has always been one of... And still, because of the... Because of his older work, he's still in the top. His older work still keeps him uh, alive. Anyway, for some more incredible takes. Controversy. Brandon goes to... Florida. Um, wait, uh, you're saying uh, Bill Burr went the cancel culture comedy route? Yeah, well. First through. Nations. Still going. Get in now. Eighty year old man going to Florida is not news. No, it is newsworthy. He literally has talked both sides on the cancel culture issue. I've heard him openly mention the cancel culture is not real shit. As I have also heard him mention that cancel culture is fucking annoying, like he talked about in his uh, latest special. But the reality is that, like, he he doesn't make it his entire identity. You know what I mean? And I think that's fine. I mean, I talk about cancel culture, too. Cancel culture fucking sucks. Nobody likes it. It's not a real thing. But nobody fucking likes it. Everybody does it. Nobody likes it. Okay. Oh my God, that's such a good Geraldo fucking meme chatter. Thank you, AZT Atlantean. All right, here it is. Blast off, juice this, boys. Our numbers are low. We need to juice it. We need to let the people know. I don't know how people still, I don't know how people still can't comprehend that like the cancellation stuff only fucking works if you are canceled by your own team, okay? And conservatives do a lot to never cancel their own team. Liberals, on the other hand, love canceling their own team. And that's pretty much it. Like, everybody does it. Conservatives recognize it better and weaponize it better. But because it's always like liberals who are often doing the cancellation, ultimately... 
right? That's the reason why people think it's just libs doing it. Why not at Bill Burr? Nobody has ever been canceled. It's just whining. That's not true. There are people that have been, that have been legitimately uh, cast aside, deplatformed, that sort of thing. You say that? Um, I think I have more experience, quote unquote, being canceled than anyone else. So yeah, I know. You know what I mean? As an online commentator, people still regularly do it. People uh, will act like they don't know my old takes, like the Lady Gaga uh, transphobic joke that I made 10 fucking years ago, when it's literally something I use in my teachable moment about transphobia and how I had transphobic thoughts and how I got through it uh, in my, in my never ending uh, quest to get people to change their attitudes about certain things that they're bigoted on. Like they do it all the time. And, and it doesn't matter because everybody knows it already. Like everybody knows it. I've talked about it. I've grown, you know what I mean? And I think you can too. I use that as an opportunity to educate other people, but they still do it. They do it all the fucking time. You know what I mean? I like how they thought they were sleuth showing that clip when you've showed it on stream yourself. So that's the point though. It's just like, uh, it's bullshit. They, these are all, people try to cancel me for buying a Gucci shirt. You know what I mean? People do it all the time, but it's not a real thing. It's not a real concept. I have only grown. I have only grown since uh, all of those controversies that, that have happened. You know what I mean? Dalia got fucked. I may be wrong, but I thought he disproved all the grooming underage allegations, but no one cared. Damage was already done. Dude, what? No, he didn't. What? Brother, that's not true. I think you got duped into thinking that that was the case. He did not disprove anything, bro. He just went, got a wife, and, you know, kept his head down. So... What was I saying? Oh, as far as, as far as like cancel culture or whatever the fuck goes, like there are great examples of that. I'm going to finish the Bill Burr clip in a second. I'm going to actually give it a better take. I'm going to give it a better spin. Uh, I'm going to look at it again now that we blasted off and we got invited the Normans and stuff into our home. Um, Like, people will sometimes get deplatformed, okay? And, uh, like, and, and it is a very successful method of, like, uh, stopping the spread of ideas that are awful, okay? And it's a last, it's a, it's a last ditch effort. It's, like, the, the, the biggest measure that you can engage in, right? And it's incredibly successful here. Look no further than Andrew Tate, obviously. Friend of the show, Andrew Tate, is a great example of this. As my man was exploding in popularity, he was blasting, and he peaked, and now he's fucking fizzling out. You know what I mean? He's still higher than his starting point when he first skyrocketed into success, but he got deplatformed. And look at him now. Right? People don't fucking uh, viciously defend him like they once did. Can you debate him right around that date? Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I debated him when he peaked a little bit. And then, you know, boom. Cancel culture is just a vague way of describing whether a person is still marketable. We've had so many fucking times 
We, we, we've had this conversation so many fucking times. You know what I mean? So many, so many times. Uh, about cancel culture and whatever. Everybody does it. Everybody weaponizes it. A lot of people do it in a, in a really disingenuous way. But it's not, it's not necessarily a... It's just not. And I, I repeat, it's not a one-side thing. Everybody does it. It's not new. It's, I don't know why like this iteration of it was more, um, had more sticking power, I guess. This iteration calling it cancel culture had more staying power. And it was made permanent, basically. But ultimately, but ultimately, okay, it's not a real thing. You can get deplatformed, but outside of that, outside of getting completely deplatformed, most of the time you can bounce back, and many do. Okay. Thanks for the raid. Michael from Pennsylvania, a.k.a. Central Committee. Hope you had a good stream. For most of my life, I've been canceling shit that I don't fuck with anymore. Yeah. <clears throat> Why is Biden such a fucking pussy? If the Saudis won't pump more, lol, let's start arming the Houthis. They're a fucking client state. How do they get away with this shit? I mean, I, well, while I was showering this morning listening to NPR talk about this, I quite literally had a similar opinion where I was like, why don't they just fucking give weapons to Iran? <laughs> just give, or fuck, fuck the weapons to Iran thing. Just like, you know, put together the old nuclearization, uh, denuclearization agreement, lift the embargo, and let Iran thrive. You know what I mean? Let fucking Iran thrive, motherfucker. What, what's going on? Let Venezuela and Iran thrive, okay? Like kings. Let them fly. Give them weapons. Give them support. Get their fucking oil. If you're that desperate to suck the earth of its delicious juices then, you know, there's plenty of avenues we can go to that we've shut off effectively from the market. Israel got to love that plant. Yeah, I mean, I'm joking. That's never going to happen. Israel would never allow that to happen. Um... That's pure delusion. Every modern uh, U.S. president has bowed to the Saudi crown. I mean, not bowed, but like, you know, we give them weapons. We allow them to fucking uh, do genocide in Yemen. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot that, they, that, that Saudi Arabia kind of relies on us on, too. It's this weird partnership. It's this weird, weird partnership because uh, we're going to talk about OPEC Plus in a second. Fuck. Let's just, let's just, let me wrap this cancel culture thing up. Okay. Everybody does it. Everyone has shortcomings. Everyone has uh, what I like to call privilege blind spots. Okay. There's an intersectionality of privilege. Most of you don't recognize it. The best thing you can do is work on those privileges and recognize that sometimes you might have a blind spot for things that for, for, uh, you know, Issues that certain uh, marginalized communities go through. It's a, it's a fundamental part of my, my commentary and my belief system. Talk about it all the time. Cancel culture ultimately is just, uh, uh, you know, weapon, the, the weaponization, of, the weaponization of, of those weaknesses, those blind spots and those imperfections as though like the individual doing the canceling or whatever doesn't have those. Of course they do. And... Um, and, and no one is infallible. No one is perfect. 
And uh, it, it, in a weird way, it is hyper capitalism because we as individuals, as human beings, are supposed to be fucking corporation uh, corporations at this point. Uh, the wokeness or woke culture is a commoditization of social justice. And it's the expectation that like individuals are supposed to behave like corporate brands. It's another way to dull uh, uh, political perspectives. Obviously, on the one side, it dulls like reactionary political perspectives, which I'm in favor of, right? But also, it will oftentimes be used against people who speak out against the current hierarchy, like myself, been canceled more times than all of your fucking favorite content creators, let's be real, okay? And over idiotic, dumb, nonsensical bullshit. But it doesn't really matter. Why? Because most people still recognize that, hey, if you're quote unquote being canceled for some fucking bullshit, then you're not actually canceled. You can only be canceled by your own side. Okay? You can only be canceled by your own side, but you can only be canceled by your own fans. As long as you still have fans, as long as you're still churning out content, as long as you're still, you know, doing whatever the fuck you were doing that that uh, got you the place you were at, you're not going to really get canceled unless you get canceled by the government, in which case you've done a crime and you're probably going to jail. So that's it. Also, we are a vindictive society and have been programmed to be so because of our prison injustice. Absolutely. We are uh, incredibly draconian. We are incredibly fucking draconian and awful. Man, I'm okay. on my way to go smoke. And, and that, that absolutely has like a... That absolutely has an impact on our our personal day to day, uh, you know, business and the way that we conduct ourselves, and it is it's fucking awful. Uh, that's why I always talk about how I lead with Man, empathy, even for those who have wronged others, and that uh, people will literally weaponize that against me. My my uh, my genuine perspective on life, people will use against me to say, "Listen, you're a fucking coward." You should be like going boss of the wall, going ham on motherfuckers, okay? I have a really high bar, especially for people I know, but even for people I don't know. A very, very, very high bar to clear for me to uh, completely write someone off, like insanely fucking high bar. And the reason for that is because I understand that we are all imperfect vessels, okay? I also talk about, I also personally talk about how on the left, we try to, con we should try to conduct ourselves in a more open-minded capacity. Okay. Because this kind of like, oh no, I'm going to immediately pull up the receipts and go this you or whatever the fuck that ultimately makes us seem unapproachable. And, uh, uh, and, and, you know, for, for the Normans, that makes us look really fucking shitty. Okay. And that's no way to, to bring up the numbers in your ranks. You always want to be trying to grow your community and trying to get people to join your side. If you think that your battle is just, if you truly believe in what you say, then you want others to also believe in what you're saying and you want others to fight for you. Okay? You want others to fight alongside you. And that will never be accomplished if you're constantly in the business of screaming at people who would otherwise be your fucking allies. Anyway, yes, this is the morally correct political group. No, you are not allowed to join. Yeah, like Bill Burr is a great example of this. An imperfect person, okay? He has some fucking takes that are garbo, like you do with chatters. Brother, there are more reformed right-wingers in this community than any other fucking community. Especially when I say reform, I, I don't mean like 
I, I don't personally mean uh, reform to like believe in, uh, you know, some other form of reactionary politics, but like truly uh, genuinely going from being transphobic to not being transphobic to, to actively fighting against transphobia, being racist to not being racist and actively fighting against racism, becoming anti-racist. There are a lot of fucking people in this community that have gone through that personally. Okay. So uh, this notion that I just like am draconian the chatters is silly, especially considering that uh, I do have an ultimate goal here. And that goal is to educate as many people as possible in an entertaining capacity. And I'm not going to be able to achieve that if people are using the, uh, the democratic process that I've set here, the back and forth conversation that you can have with a large streamer doing political commentary, which you can't get anywhere else. If people are going to abuse that system by routinely derailing the conversation and regularly uh, trying to say idiotic things to stunlock me, then in order to continue the conversation forward, I'm going to sometimes bl uh, block people. But we always give you the capacity to get unblocked. You just have to, or unbanned, you just have to reach out to the moderators and understand what you have done was wrong. But a lot of people don't want to go through that process because they think they're in the right and they're like, no, nah, I just still want to fucking uh, derail the combo. Fuck you. And there are plenty of people in this community that speak out against me and have a different perspective than me. And, and you know, I don't fucking block them or ban them or anything like that. Especially if they fucking conduct themselves in a responsible manner. Faustini is a great example. The fact that I'm still on band is proof. You don't ban like crazy. I'm a 20 month live and still here. Never banned. Yeah. There are plenty of people that I, I, uh, you know, don't ban because their, their goal isn't necessarily to derail and like say idiotic things like, well, you say you're a socialist. Why don't you give all of your money to me right now? You know what I mean? That they think that that's a gotcha, right? But that's not the fucking case, obviously. Like, it's just a, it's just an idiotic thing that I have to address a million times over. Okay. And when you get banned, you just can't chat. That's it. It's not the end of the world. I'm not fucking stopping you from watching the content. Okay. You just can't chat. That's it. Anyway, um, but let's get back to Bill Burr. Yesterday, we watched a video of him going fucking balls to the wall with some crazy takes, uh, destroying uh, a, a, a fan of his that had some really awful takes about him talking about socialism. And there's more. Um, here's another older clip that uh, Zay uh, Squirrel brought up. Here it is. When Bill Maher's show, The Join is Ritual, rage whining about woke cancel culture, but instead he went along, instead of going along with Burr, or instead of going along with Maher, Burr mocks him and says he's been a hysterical and, and, freak. you know, I've always enjoyed you. I think you're a great comic. But I thought tonight maybe we would, like, sort of share a cry together because um, I think we have something <laughs> in common, which is that we think political correctness may be ruining comedy, or at least threatening it. Because I know you've had your problems with that. And you, you did a routine recently about how women like it rough. And then, of course, the internet police got all over you. Well, I gotta be honest with you, I didn't notice if that happened because I don't pay attention to it. I don't list, read oh, it comments. Happened. Yeah, they hated you. Yeah, but who did? <laughs> But the this haters. Is my, this is my thing. Who? Like the 20 haters. people? Like 20 people with a hashtag can get right. like a news story going now. And I just, I just don't think. There's no problem. Like the amount of times somebody tells a joke and they'll say that there's a controversy at a comedy club. That's funny is they'll show the clip on the news and like you hear the crowd laughing. So the comic is basically guilty of telling a joke that worked. Right. You know what well, I mean? And then if you put it on the news, yeah, it's going to be a completely different uh, context. But I mean, I don't go on stage and worry about what people are thinking. Right. It's a really weird time where people are just bringing this up all the time like this is a major problem. I haven't, I'm not experiencing it. I think it's like a half a dozen stories and like usual they're trying to act like, you know, 
the, the sky is falling. It isn't. It's a right. fun time. Come out to a comedy club. You know, you'll have a good time. It's all jokes. Right. Um, and to undergo that, I mean, Chris Rock says he won't play colleges anymore because they're too politically correct. Um, Daniel you just ignore them. It's like three days. They flip out for three days. They try to bully you into an apology. Well, you can't ignore them when they're right in the audience and you're playing to them. You tell them to shut the fuck up. Yeah, believe it's a, it's me. It's a comedy you know show. That's all you do. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it, it's like... Sweetheart, I do it here every week. It's, uh, it's you don't manufactured have to tell me. strategic outrage. Right. Then forget it. Let's not have a good cry together. <laughs> but as long as we're on the subject... <laughs> Look at him, he's just fucking bouldering him. Yeah, that's not what you want out of that. Um, remember he talked about uh, Kenosha. He talked about Kyle Rittenhouse being a fucking freak. He was right about that too. And uh, he's, still, he's still fucking daggering with uh, some truth bombs here where he talks about Hillary but, Clinton. But like... Um... This is from his latest uh, Monday morning podcast on Monday. How are you? Bill... Bill... Old Billy bitch tits talking about cancer culture. No, no, not this time, sweetheart. Sherry's berries. Welcome back to the Monday morning podcast on Monday. At the top of the hour, there's a 60 second ad break. And if you no longer want to see those ads, guess what? All you need to do is subscribe, huh? Some of you motherfuckers don't want to do that, and that's fine. But you're going to see an ad. Womack for the 10 gifted subs allowing 10 guys to no longer see the ads either. You just sound like the mom from Bob's Burgers. You'll have him on in no time. Dude, the only reason why I can do a decent Bill Burr impression is because I'm a fan. What do you mean? Zip recruiter. All right, I'm running the fucking ad break now. You kind of just sound like him already too, Lamau. Sometimes I hear Bill Burr when you're getting fired up. If you could do a casual impression without raising your volume so much, it would make the shouting off mic bit absolutely perfect. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, did you cover the Ukrainian war already? Wait, what brother? I've been covering it every day. I'm going to talk about Iran today too. Cause I heard some fucking insane shit. All right. You know, all of this shit that they stir up your feelings about other countries or, or, or the racist that Trump stirs up. You know what I mean? These fucking, like, just straight up people that walk around saying the fucking N-word and shit. Um, and, like, you really have to try and not listen to those people and get caught under their fucking bullshit because they're, 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 they don't, they don't have your best interest. And, you know, Hillary Clinton, I don't think there was, there's no difference She's just as evil as Trump. She's just smarter. <laughs> she just knows how to say what she's saying. Um, you know, but you know what she's doing, okay? Look, you know, I don't want to get into this shit, but like, you know, that shit that people are saying online going, hey, so you got the Epstein guy, and you got the person that booked the island. But what about that list of people of all the people that went there? And 
they're protecting those people. And they got rid of the people that were going to expose them. I mean, I mean, it's it's really not conspiracy theory. It's kind of right there if you want to see it. Um, yeah, it's and you know, liberals love a guy that I got to be careful so I don't get in trouble. But like, liberals love a guy that like went there allegedly like twenty fucking times. They still love the guy. They they love a guy that drone bombed weddings. So like I don't see them as liberal, progressive fucking people. And then on the right, you know, what they're showing me is fucking toothless racist. So I don't even know where the fuck I stand right now. But, uh, you know, they can't stop me from enjoying my day and trying to be a nice person and f- enjoying being a father. You know, if that's what you want to do, you want to stick all my money on my phone and fucking control where I spend it, fine. Does that make you happy? Does that make you dick hard? I don't give a fuck. Because life is flying by, and all you can, they they can't, you can't stop time, you know? All you can do is enjoy yourself. So just don't be a cunt. There's a fucking line waiting it. Fucking asshole. All right, 1970s commercials. Um, hi, Bill. We are roughly the same age, and I figure 1975 would be some of our earliest memories of commercials, and I was right. See how many of these things ring. Okay, none of this, none of this implies that I'm actually going to... I mean, he's just saying the exact same things that I've said time and time again, Chatter, but this doesn't mean that he's going to come on the show. I thought he like openly was talking about, like, this, this fucking guy on Twitter... He just performed for a charity event. My girlfriend was involved in it. He bombed and got pissed off at the audience for not laughing. Hey, listen, again, not everyone is perfect. Like, of course, he's going to have some imperfections, brother. Like, what the fuck do you mean? Bill Burr punched me in the mouth and called me a loser for watching House on Ivy Real. Um, maybe Ethan can help after his interview. I don't know if he has a connection anymore. No, Ethan literally had another one where he was actually fine. Uh, I think like he did two. He did two. And that's it. Anyway, here, let's continue. Today, President- Bill was on H3 four and three years ago. Yeah, he, he's done two. The second one was better, apparently. They were way more, like, agreeable with one another. Um, Rhonda Santis, dude, what a bad bitch, okay? What a fucking bad bitch, all right? This is the real photo. This is the fake one. This bitch made it illegal to say gay in Florida. <laughs> That's a good one. I mean, he's serving. He's serving cunt. I'll just say it. I'll say it because people are afraid of saying it, okay? He's in his slut era. Bro is in his slut era. He, he too. Anti uncovered a damning clip. It's strapped for me. He looks like an old video game, the like inside of an old video game cartridge. Like, if you're gonna go colorful, you don't have to go, I mean, I don't know, I don't like it. It's stra- you guys need to stop. Please stop. Please stop this. Please stop these. Don't do this. I hate my old clips so much. I was just so bad on camera. Why is your community so joking all the time? Yeah, I don't know. All right. Uh, before we get to Matt Walsh not beating the pedophilia accusations, okay? Actually, openly leaning into it.